In this video we're going to be making ourselves a fairly simple photo slideshow using Adobe Animate or Adobe Flash. Basically you've got five photos and you can click buttons at the bottom that take you left and right through these photos. Okay, It's very similar to this uh, Windows Photo Viewer program we've got open now. Okay, so there are our five photos. Let's go into Flash now and convert this into a little photo slideshow. First thing we're going to do to get started is click an Action Script 3.0 file and go to the magnification box at the top and choose Fit in Window. Now to begin with today we need to go to our library panel up here and we need to import the five photos we'd like to use in our slideshow. At the moment our library is empty so you can easily pick up these five photos and drag them into Flash and drop them into your library. It's probably the quickest way to do it. You can see now when you click on these pictures you've got all five of the slideshow photos in your library. Um, since this is our first scene we're going to drag the first photo onto the page. Now straight away I can see a problem that my photo is too big. Okay, it's too wide for this canvas. So basically I'm going to need to go to my properties box here. And if I click on this photo with my black arrow it tells me the width is 600 and the height is 400 pixels. So I want my stage to match that. So using your black arrow just click off the photo and click in the uh, grey area outside of your stage. And I want you to change the size of your stage to 600 by 400 pixels. It will match the size of the photo. That way you can pick the photo up and drag it until it fits perfectly on your stage. Okay. Now that's all well and good but we do want to have a little menu bar at the bottom with some little buttons that will take us left and right to allow us to navigate through the photo slideshow. So we're going to need to make our stage a little bit taller. So still clicked off your photo, you should be able to see the size of the stage. The width is fine at 600, but the height, we're just going to up it by 50 pixels. So we'll go to 450 pixels and press enter. And if we go to the fit in window option again, you can see it's added a white strip along the bottom here, and that's plenty of room for us to add a little menu bar. Okay. So that white strip can be changed from white to any other color. Okay, I'm just going to go with a black, I think, for now. That'll look pretty cool. And that's our first photo looking good in the slideshow. I'm going to rename layer one there to, whoops, to photo. And I'm going to lock it into position. And I'm just going to make one more layer above it called buttons. I'm not going to do the buttons just yet. We're going to come back to that shortly, but I've got the layer there ready to go. What I do want to do now is add in the other photos to the other scenes. So I'm going to go to my window menu and get my scene panel open. In my scene panel I've got one scene at the moment. I've got five photos, so I want to have five scenes. Each photo is going to go on a different scene. So I'm going to press this new add scene button down the bottom here four more times to put in our five different scenes. Okay, so let's go to scene two now. And in our library tab at the top here, grab your second photo, which is the Glasshouse Mountains, and drag and drop it onto the page, and get it positioned in the top left-hand corner. Alrighty, so that's looking good. I can rename that layer to Photo, lock that layer, and make another layer above it called Buttons. We'll go to Scene 3 now. Okay, in Scene 3, we'll go to our library, pick up our third photo, which looks like it could be Moffat or Kings or one of those beaches in Shelley Beach and we're going to drop it into position up the top there. If you can't get your picture right in the corner there what you can do is go to your properties and with the photo selected change the X value to 0 and the Y value to 0 and that will push it up into the top left hand corner so it's fitting perfectly at the top of your page. Don't forget to rename layer 1 to photo lock it, make another new layer, and we'll call it buttons, move on to the next scene. So scene 4, grab the fourth photo, drag and drop it on, call layer 1 photo, lock it, make another new layer, and we will call it buttons. One to go now, so let's go to our final scene, bring on the fifth photo, which is someone surfing at Noosa by the looks of it, Rename the layer to photo, lock it, make another new layer, call it buttons, and that's it. Okay, you can press page up and page down on your keyboard to scroll through the different scenes. 
should be able to see you've got five different scenes with five different photos, one on each scene. Once you've done that, pop back to your first scene now. Okay, we're going to work with the fisherman guy. What we're going to do is get the buttons onto our page. I mean, old versions of Animate or old versions of Flash, they used to give you a whole bunch of buttons to choose from to do jobs like this. These are what the buttons used to look like. But unfortunately, in the latest versions of Flash and Animate, they've scrapped this library of buttons altogether. Um, so they don't exist anymore. But what I've done is actually gone back to one of the old versions of Flash and I've got a copy of this library for you to use. So you don't have to make your own buttons from scratch, which is very handy. Okay, so what I am going to get you to do now in Flash is go to File and Import and Open External Library. We're going to open up that library that's full of all those buttons. So in Curriculum Drive, you should be able to find a file called buttons.fla. Just double click on it and you'll see a panel appear which has all those buttons I just showed you in it. If you know what you're looking for, you can use a little search box to find the name of the button. If you don't, you can right click on any of these folders and choose Expand All Folders. And now what you can do is click through and just use your down arrow to go through all the different buttons and you can see what they look like. Basically we need a button that's got an arrow on it pointing to the right so it looks like we can go to the next photo. Okay, and a good way to find them, I guess is right the word play. Another cool button is the gel buttons. Okay, I really like these little gel buttons, they look good. So the button that looks like I'm going to the next photo is this one here, the gel right button. Okay, you don't have to use this one, but I am going to use it. So with gel right selected and making sure we're on the buttons layer, just pick it up and drag it onto your page. You can close that panel for a moment. You can see you've got this little button on the page. If you want, you can zoom in a bit here and maybe make that a little bit bigger. So I'm going to click on that picture and use my, what is it, scale tool? Or no, free transform tool. Just hold shift and stretch that out a little bit. Make sure it's big enough to see. Yeah, it's pretty good. Once you've got it to a good size, you can go back to the fit in window option. Now we can put that button, I reckon. Oh, about there, we're going to have a button on the left over here on most scenes. Okay, now that button's in the position, we'll go to the properties and give it a name. We'll just call it next. And we're going to go to edit and copy. Okay, with that button copied, we can go to the next scene. Go to edit and paste in place. You want to have this button in the exact same position, position on each scene. So that's why when we go to a new scene, we choose edit and paste in place. It's not just a paste job, you want to be pasting it in place. Alright, so each scene now should have a button pointing to the right. Now it's probably a bit silly to have this on the very last scene. There's no other photos to go on to, so it might be an idea just to delete it off there. Alright, back to scene one. What we're going to do now is get the opposite of this one. So let's see if we can find a button that goes backwards. Gel left it should be called. Yep, there it is there. So what I'm going to do is pick that up, drag it onto the page. And I'll give it a name. Back. Okay, so you've got this big button here called Next. The little button at the moment is called Back. Now I want these two buttons the same size. So I'm going to click on this Gel Right button. Oops, and go to its properties here. And we can see the width 47, 30 by 4550. So I'll do the same for this one. So it's 4730 by 4550. Now you've got two buttons the same size and we'll just put this one in line with the other one just over to the right. Ah, oh, sorry, over to the left. Okay, probably about there looks good. So I'm going to pick that image up now and go to copy and go through each of my scenes and paste it in place. Alright, so that's our last one right there and it will take us back. Like we just did before, this first scene hasn't got a picture to go back to. So what I might do is just delete it off the first scene and we'll just have this play button on the first scene that's going to take us through to the next photo. Alright, so we've got our buttons in, all our photos are in, all we need to do now is code up these buttons to make them work. Alright, so I'm going to have to make a new layer 
and we'll call it actions. Remember you're back on the first scene here. Inside your actions here you want to go to your window menu and get your actions up or you can just press F9. Now the first piece of code you want to write in is the stop code. Basically when we get to this uh, scene we want to stop. We want to let people have a look at it and they can press a button if they want to go somewhere else. Okay, So we're going to stop as soon as we hit this scene. Next thing we're going to do is click on this button. Go to our window menu and get our code snippets up. We're going to let Flash write the code for us. Underneath action script, go to timeline navigation and we're going to look for the click to go to next scene and play option. Okay, so just double click it and what that does is puts in the code to make that next button work. Basically you've got a button called next just here and with that button sitting on the page Flash will be listening out for an event when this animation is run. The event that it's listening out for is a mouse event and it's a click. So basically, a little bit confusing, it's saying when we click on the next button, we're going to run a piece of code called that. Click to go to next scene. And it's called a function, that piece of code. And here's the function down a little bit lower. It's called function, click to go to next scene. And basically, all it is, is when we click on that button, take us to the next scene. Very confusing when you've never seen this code before, but basically, when we click on the next button, take us to the next scene. Simple as that. So that button should be working now. What we're going to do is go to the next scene, scene 2. Lo actually, we won't lock the buttons layer yet. We'll just make a new layer and we'll call it Actions. And we're going to go straight into our Actions and put in the stop code. So when we get to scene 2, we want it to stop so people can look at the photo and then make the decision. Do they want to go back in the slideshow or forwards? Okay, so they've got the option here to go forwards. So let's go to our code snippets. Click to go to next scene and play. And that puts the code in for us. If we want to go back though, we've got to do it a little, di little bit different with the code. It's just the one below it. Click to go to previous scene and play. Okay, so when we click the next button, we go to the next scene. When we click the back button, we go to the previous scene. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's go to the next scene and do that again so if we want to go to the previous button here and put on the previous scene code don't forget also at the top we need to write in our stop code I just forgot that so in line one we need our stop code there so when we get to scene three we actually stop on it first then can choose a button to press and don't forget the right button is looking to go to the next scene and play so double click that code and that will allow us to go to the next scene okay two to go so on scene four now you might have noticed that I didn't even make an actions layer on scene 3 here. It just made itself. And Flash will do that for you, or Animate will do that for you if you haven't done it already. So watch this. As I put on the code to go back to the previous scene, you'll see that Flash, in a moment, has created an actions layer for us, which is handy. And we just want to tell Flash to take us to the next scene if you press that button so click to go to next scene and play and missing from this is the stop code on line one so don't forget to put your stop code up the top so we can stop on that scene before choosing where we go next and finally we just got scene five which has a previous button on it okay so go to your code snippets and put in the click to go to previous scene and play code don't forget to put your stop code at the top all right so that's about it. If we press Control Enter now and give this a test run, let's see if we've got a working fo uh, photo slideshow. So first of all, we hit this fishing picture and it's stopped. So our stop code's working. Let's hope our button code works too. Looks like it is. When we get to scene two, everything stops, and we can make the choice to either go back or we have the choice to go forward. So just practice going through those photos forwards and backwards and make sure you can't find any glitches with those buttons. They should be in the exact same position on every scene. They should not move, not even by a millimetre. Okay, that looks pretty good. So that's a finished slideshow. Don't forget to go to File and Save As and make sure you save that. And that will do you for this tutorial.